Hello and welcome to the next tutorial about Prepaw Mix. Uh, this video will be different than the previous ones uh, because uh, I will show you how to create a hexahedral mesh in Gmesh and import it to Prepaw Mix. Uh, let's leave the Prepaw Mix for now and I will show the geometry. Mm, that's just the face. Uh, it actually represents the back face of the beam uh, that we discussed in uh, one of the tutorials, the one about plasticity. Uh, but I modeled this just as a face, you will later see why it was done this way. Mm, and I simply created a sketch and then used the uh, part make face from wires tool to uh, create the face, of course, then I exported it to a uh, step file. Uh, all right, uh, let's uh, go to GMesh. Uh, GMesh uh, is an open source software. Uh, it's uh, far from user friendliness of Prepomex, uh, but it provides quite powerful meshing capabilities. Uh, and most importantly, you can generate hexahedral meshes, which is not possible with most uh, open source code. Uh, so let's uh, open the mm, geometry uh, that we will use in this tutorial uh, that's the, the file uh, displayed here uh, and uh, you can see that uh, this is displayed just as edges uh, so I can uh, enable display of uh, surfaces too uh, the surfaces by default are, are displayed using these dashed lines I could change this but this is not important for now so, so let's uh, leave this uh, like it is uh, and now I have to go to geometry, elementary entities, and set geometry kernel and select open cascade. And this is necessary for, for the whole process to work. Uh, and uh, I have to create a new geo file. Uh, you will later see this file. And this is uh, the file that holds the, the commands. Uh, it's a script file that holds the commands generated by Gmesh. All right, uh, let's now mm, go to mesh, define, uh, transfer it. And uh, I will select the curve option. Uh, I have to pick the uh, four edges uh, here mm, and I need to specify the number of points. Uh, I will select six. This is important because this affects the uh, size of the mesh uh, that will be uh, generated later. Uh, now uh, I just have to press the E button to uh, end uh, the selection and Q to uh, abort. And also let's do the same with the surface. Mm, I will select the middle uh, of the surface here. Uh, and again, press E to uh, confirm, Q to abort, uh, and that's it. Uh, you can edit the script, so we will see how it looks like. Mm, the commands that we used are listed here. Uh, that's the, the parameter that I specified. I could change this uh, here, save the uh, file and reload the script, and um, Gmesh would uh, load the changes, so um, you can also work this way, uh, interchangeably, basically. Uh, now uh, let's uh, just uh, extrude the uh, geometry along with the with the mesh but i also have to uh, specify a few options for uh, meshing uh, i'll select the automatic algorithm uh, recombine uh, select all quads and that's basically uh, what we need uh, and i will also change the visibility uh, of the uh, mesh to just the uh, 3D element faces and edges. Uh, that's all we uh, will need in this case. Uh, all right. Uh, if you want to uh, see the um, faces uh, display normally, you can go to aspect and uh, select the uh, solid display of the faces, but this is not uh, important. So uh, let's uh, leave this. Uh, all right. Now I will go to ex geometry, extrude, translate, um, and uh, I have to specify a few uh, parameters. And that's the distance uh, of the extrusion. Uh, so I will specify uh, the length of the beam. Um, that's, the, that's what we need to provide here. Of course, I have to select the extrude mesh option. Uh, I need to specify the number of mesh layers, uh, which also affects the uh, density of the mesh. Mm, and that's all uh, I have to do. Mm, I just need to s also select the, the face that will be extruded. Uh, again, confirm with the, the same button as usually and press Q to uh, abort. And now I can zoom out and uh, see the mm, generated uh, geometry. Now I could uh, display the, the faces properly, but uh, again, it's, it's not so important. Uh, let's now mm, Let's now generate the, the mesh that we need, uh, but uh, first uh, I will do one more thing. I will create a physical group. Uh, this is important because uh, this way mm, the exported input file uh, that we'll use in Prepomex uh, won't contain unnecessary element types. Otherwise it, could, would, con it would contain surface and line element types. So uh, this is something that we don't need. We just need the solid elements uh, for, for the volume. Mm, so I will just create a physical group for the volume and uh, this will make the Gmesh export just the uh, solid elements. Let's confirm uh, and uh, close this. Uh, of I, could, I could also mm, add the script again. Uh, you can see all the definitions. 
let's close this and now I will generate the mesh 1D, 2D and 3D. Uh, and thanks to the display options that we uh, set on the, in the beginning, you can see mm, what we need uh, to see. Mm, let's uh, hide the surfaces and we'll see uh, how the, the mesh looks like. This is the, the, the hexahedral mesh that we generated uh, using extrusion from, from the surface. All right, mm, now let's uh, export this mesh. Mm, I have to specify the format. Uh, I it can guess from the extension, so uh, I can just uh, specify the, mm, the extension. This will be input uh, file. Uh, and uh, let's uh, save this uh, and use this mesh in uh, Prepomex. All right, uh, I can confirm this. Um, and now let's go to uh, Prepomex. Uh, I will create a new model. And uh, this will be 3D model. Mm, now I have to import the geometry, of course, uh, and let's select the input file. Uh, I can also use other formats. Universal files are also supported, so uh, mesh could be imported in different formats, but input files uh, are a good option uh, for Calculex and, and Prepomex. All right, you can see the mesh. It was properly generated along with some sets uh, that we don't actually need. One more thing um, is uh, that I would like to change the uh, type of the element. Uh, I mean, the, I this will be hexahedral element, but there are several types available. And if you go to edit part uh, in, the, in this tab, you can see that we can change the type of element. We can select from the list, uh, and those are the elements that we need with reduce integration. Uh, those are incompatible modes, el mode elements. Uh, you can uh, you can uh, test them in various uh, applications. Uh, they are better for, for, for some types of analysis. Uh, and f in this case, the, the, the one uh, here should provide the best results. Uh, I, uh, actually, I can show you mm, here are the results that I obtained with various types of elements. Uh, and using uh, surface traction in Calculex, uh, those are the, mm, the results. You can also compare with Abacus, uh, but mm, this is the, uh, the result that we are looking for, uh, something around this. The mesh will be uh, a bit different because I, mm, I used uh, different meshes before, uh, but the, we'll use the same element type and, and uh, type of uh, the way we apply loading. Uh, so we should get around this, uh, this value. And this is pretty close to the identical solution. Uh, you you I will show you this, this solution, of course, uh, later on. Uh, so now let's let's confirm this uh, and uh, I will specify the material uh, this will be uh, steel so I will rename this and specify typical uh, values uh, for the steel uh, and uh, I will use uh, also plasticity uh, because I mentioned that this is the uh, same uh, model that we discussed in the tutorial about plasticity and I use of course the same values mm, so let's confirm this let's create a section apply this to the beam uh, again confirm uh, and let's go to steps. Uh, I will create a static step mm, and now I just have to define boundary conditions and loading. Uh, I will select the, the fixed uh, boundary condition and you can see that Prepomax easily recognizes uh, faces even if this is just an imported mesh. Uh, so I will apply a uh, fixed boundary condition to, to one, of the one end of the beam uh, and now I will apply load in form of uh, surface traction to the other uh, side of the beam. Uh, and the value that I will specify uh, is of course again uh, the same as in previous tutorial ab about the, this beam, this case, uh, because we want to, to compare the, the solutions directly. Uh, and now uh, I have everything defined and I can submit the uh, analysis. Let's do this. You can see that the results are uh, already available, so let's uh, check them. Uh, and what we will be comparing is uh, deflection of the beam. Uh, so let's select uh, uh, deflection in the right direction. Uh, let's go to the uh, spread uh, to the sheet where, where I have uh, the analytical value. Mm, this is the, the same calculation that I showed you in, in the previous tutorial about uh, this beam. Uh, and here you can see the, the value uh, that uh, we are looking for uh, in uh, Prepomex. Uh, and uh, I should also show you the value that I obtained previously uh, in previous approach with tetrahedral elements. Uh, you can see that it was not uh, that close to the analytical uh, solution that we use that we obtained here. All right, so let's uh, see how it looks like here, uh, and you can see that it's uh, much better. Uh, it's not uh, again. It's it's not um, uh, the, the accuracy uh, still could be better, but uh, it's it's much uh, better than it was uh, with tetrahedral elements. Uh, and um, you can see that we are close to uh, what I obtained previously for this type of element. Uh, so 
Uh, I hope that everything was clear when it comes to Gmesh. Uh, I started using this software recently, so mm, I can make some mistakes. Uh, please tell me if, if I should do something differently. Uh, also, please tell me if you want to see more tutorials like that about uh, creating hexahedral meshes in, in uh, external software, importing them to the Prepomex. Uh, this is an interesting topic. Uh, so uh, that's it for this Prepomax tutorial. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, as always, feel free to ask any questions and uh, suggest topics for future tutorials in the comments. Have a nice day and see you in the next video.